Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this. And this here is the Pi Pocket Phone 70 radio, used by the British Army in Northern Ireland from the 19, early 1970s through to the late 1970s, early 80s. It seems to stop showing up in photographs around that time frame. I don't have an exact date for when it went out of service. If anyone can help me with that in the comments section, I'd be very grateful. But certainly in use during the 1970s. A police radio, essentially, it was far better suited to the British operations in Northern Ireland in terms of their being security forces, as opposed to the military issue radios which were around at the time. It was far more practical. It did have some limitations, obviously it wasn't a secure network and so forth, but it did allow liaison with the Royal Ulster Constabulary and it was very suitable for the sort of operations, the patrolling and so forth in urban areas which were going on at the time. This mannequin uh, is specifically set up to represent a private in the Argyll and Sutherland Highlanders on one of their numerous deployments during the mid-1970s. The way this is carried is based on the image used for the thumbnail of this video, uh, which shows it carried in the pocket of the body armour. I'm assuming the chap in that photograph, uh, who's a member of the Royal Artillery as opposed to an infantry regiment, I'm assuming he must have been left-handed because carrying it in the right pocket like this really would mean bringing the rifle up to the shoulder or the, the SMG up to the shoulder would be uh, rather impractical. You do see it carried in both pockets uh, and quite commonly on the body armour like this. Uh, where the straight wire is used, it was often tucked underneath the body armour, but the handset with a coil cable was used that tended to just hang loose. So that's the basics of this and just to show you how it looks when it's being carried, uh, one example thereof, we'll get into the video now and talking about this in a little bit more detail. So here we have the Pocket Phone 70 radio telephone, which is what it was referred to uh, in the marketing uh, literature for it. Quite an interesting design, uh, quite an advanced design for the time in terms of police radios. Introduced into British Army service in late 1971 in Belfast, and issue would then spread from there. Uh, and they were issued on a scale of 75 per infantry battalion. For the duties which were being conducted, it was quite a step up from the standard issue A41 radio, the man pack radios which were being carried at the time prior to this. The reason for that, of course, is it's much lighter weight. You're not lugging around the same weight. It's a lot less conspicuous as well. As we saw on the mannequin, the way it's carried in the pocket of the body armour is fairly inconspicuous, certainly from behind. You don't have the big bulky man pack, so there's advantages from that point of view. It makes the radio man a little bit less of a target. From introduction in 1971, I don't have a final date when these were taken out of service and replaced. I believe they were around until at least the early 80s because they seem to turn up in photographs up to that point. Uh, but if anyone knows, if anyone has more information on that, if you happen to be serving at the time these were swapped for something else, I'd be very interested to know in the comments if anyone can provide details on that. Uh, I imagine it would be somewhat phased. Um, they, the, the, I doubt they were replaced uh, completely all in one go because they were still a very serviceable radio. What we have here are two different varieties of loudspeaker microphone and the radio itself in the centre here. Obviously we have a straight lead, a coiled lead, We'll talk about the radio itself first. Very tough design uh, in a polycarbonate case. Very tough, um, very durable, shower proof as well. So definitely a, a good design from that point of view in terms of durability. You can see it's a three channel system, one, two and three there and the simple dial in the center there. You can just move that around to, to change channel. A little bit stiff there. Um, this is seen better days. Uh, it's not something I intend to get working again. Uh, it's just for display, um, but it, it serves that purpose. So, a quick run round of the case there, um, we'll talk about the, the little screw for the battery on the back there in a moment. At the top here we have the socket for the antenna, and we have the socket for the loudspeaker microphone obviously on, and the volume control there, and the little TS call button there on the side. Um, the antenna I had on this when it was on the mannequin is a stand-in, a modern stand-in, actually not the right thread um, for this. Uh, but for display purposes it, it serves its purpose. I would like to pick up an original Pocket Phone 70 compatible antenna, uh, one of the thin variety that were issued seemingly to the British Army. Uh, all the photographs I've seen, or the vast majority of the photographs I've seen, show a small, uh, a thin, sort of whip-like aerial on the top there. The battery pack's down here. Um, obviously, we've talked about three channels. Uh, this works on a 68 to 274 megahertz frequency range, I believe. Uh, 15 volt battery, which gives a, a in normal conditions, about 13 hours of operation from full charge. Uh, the battery can be charged whilst attached to the radio. You have these two port, two, two little uh, charging points here. This can be slotted into a charging dock um, and charged that way. But the battery can also be removed. You have this screw on the back here, this little, get hold of that, 
uh, a screw pin that holds the battery in place. I've just unscrew this, loosen it all the way off. Whoop, there we go. I'm trying to do this looking through the camera. There we go. And just there it is. That's the battery out of there. Not in the best condition. I've not cleaned this up yet. This is just as it's come to me. I say I don't really intend to get try and get this working. It's mainly for display. Uh, but you can see in there the two connectors for the battery itself and then lower part of the battery there you've got the two two pins which were exposed to those two holes there not sure about what the third um, or two points rather rather than pins not sure what the third one is for there but uh, the battery simply slots in like that get the uh, screw out of the way there we go slots in like that and then just press that in and screw that back in lock the battery in place um, very well made, very, as I say, a good design from that point of view in terms of durability, uh, very tough case. It's fairly heavy compared to modern uh, police radios and things. Uh, it's a, a brick, in, in much as early mobile phones were. It's the technology of the time. The two loudspeaker microphones, these don't really differ in only in the leads. Uh, the actual microphone uh, loudspeaker component itself doesn't differ, just the, the cable that comes off it. This one's lost its... Um, lost its pie label in the corner there but otherwise exactly the same same socket system and everything this here uh, you have a call button on the side there uh, press press to talk basically um, flip this around you've got a rotating clip on the rear so that's quite a convenient little feature of the design uh, you can clip this on anywhere to, to clothing obviously as we had it clipped onto the lapel of the uh, the body armor on the mannequin before so very convenient from that point of view and uh, nice nice size fits in the hand nicely um, and effective very simple but effective design there was another variant of these used by the british army which had a, a socket in the top to take a jack from an earpiece and i don't have one of these i would like to pick one up along with the earpiece obviously that gives you the advantage of not blaring uh, the message from the loudspeaker itself uh, you can hear uh, the incoming uh, radio traffic in your ear and then just speak through the through the microphone um, I'd like to pick one of those up they do exist I've seen one in someone else's collection online that they've posted photographs of and I've got the original catalogue entry for them it's just a case of keeping an eye out and hopefully at some point I'll be able to pick up uh, an original uh, example of that type of microphone with an original earpiece fingers crossed uh, I, there was an original photograph I was going to include in the video here unfortunately uh, the chap who posted it up on Facebook I did message asking if uh, he would mind me sharing it in the video uh, but I didn't hear anything back so I, obviously I've left that out. Whilst I can't show you the photograph of the earpiece in use in Northern Ireland you can see here an extract from a period catalogue which shows the loudspeaker microphone with the earpiece attached. There are photographs of that type being used in Northern Ireland as well a little bit later on I think initially this type of, of loudspeaker microphone was was introduced and then the advantage of the earpiece are self-evident so they were introduced a little bit later on from what i've seen in photographs as i say that's based purely on photographic evidence and the dates the photographs were taken one brief thing to mention is obviously we've talked about not blaring messages to the street at large with having the earpiece fitted the pocket phone 70 the the radio net for it was not secure and that was one issue with it um one issue that would persist throughout its use uh, but for the duties being conducted, it was definitely a step up from the army issue, uh, the standard issue army radios of the time period, a lot lighter uh, and a lot more convenient for the kind of security duties the British Army were conducting at the time. One final thing to mention, which goes beyond the more general use of the Pocket Phone 70 by British troops in Northern Ireland, is specific use by the SAS during the 1970s and 80s. And this includes use during Operation Nimrod, of course, the siege of the Iranian embassy in London. So there we are, that's a look at the Pi Pocket Phone 70 radio. Quite an interesting bit of equipment used by the British Army in Northern Ireland, very specific to the role of internal security as opposed to more typical military operations in the fact that it is essentially a police radio of the time. Uh, but uh, quite a practical little piece of kit and an interesting thing. I'm glad I picked one of these up. It really looks good set up on the mannequin like this, I think. And it's been nice having this alongside the mannequin of the month. It's been nice having this set up in the, the back room uh, so yeah, I'm quite pleased, I'm rather pleased with picking this up and obviously I wanted to bring it to you in a video and talk a bit about it because it is an interesting little piece of kit. I hope you've enjoyed that, as I always say. Uh, if you have, please do consider subscribing and if you'd like to see more of this sort of thing going forward, then uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. And if you're new subscribing or you've already subscribed, do make sure you also hit the little bell, the little notification button, which will alert you when I upload future videos, of course. If you really like my videos and you'd like to support the channel, you can. There's both a Patreon and a PayPal link down below. And as usual, a huge thank you to everyone who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated. 
There is, of course, social media for the channel as well, and photographs of this have been floating around on there for a little while as a teaser for this video, so it's a good place to get uh, sneak peeks and things. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all linked down below. And if you want to contact me but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down below as well. But that's everything I wanted to cover in this video, I think. So until next time, bye for now.